In this last video training on module one, we focus on the leadership impact. And we say here that the overall discipleship management of potential leaders can be summarized as follows. It's got three stages. You've got the support stage, you've got the training stage, and you've got the growth stage. And so this video gives practical examples on leadership development within the practice. And we break it down in the following manner. Uh, Take out a piece of paper again, or your notebook that you're currently using to go through this training, and have four columns. Column number one, uh, at the top, just write action or activity. And under that, we'll give you various points of consideration. The second column, write support stage. The third, second, the third column, write training stage. And the final column, write growth stage. And so let's start. We're going to give you examples of what, as a leader, what needs to be happening on each and every single component or block. And so the very first statement that we wrote here is the action by the optom or the owner. At the support stage, you need to be caring for your team. That's the first thing that people need to see and encounter at the support stage. You're caring for the team. The training stage, it's where learning takes place and work abilities are, are trained. Skills development takes place in the training stage. So before you can start training people, before you can start teaching them what you need them to know, do they know that you care for them? Is their well-being a top priority for you as the business owner or as an optometrist. It's easier to train someone that knows that you support them. So if a person does not know that you support them and you are busy trying to train them, that training will be futile because they will not be able to connect with that training because they did not connect with you. And then the growth stage, the action that takes place there is you're creating opportunity, you are mentoring. Opportunity, mentoring. You are showing them that, hey, if we do this, this is what it can result in. If we do this, this is what it can mean for you. Very, very important that you are mentoring, you're coaching. That's the role in the growth stage. The second part, the main area of focus at the support stage is the individual wants. You are focused on that. Individual wants uh, is what you're focusing on. At the training stage is the tasks and the practice needs. Uh, that are very, very important. So you now get to understand what is it that this person wants? What is it that, I mean, it's a new employee, for example, it's a person that is working here. What do they actually want out of this environment that they're working for? Then once you understand what they want, then you are introducing the training stage, whereby you are communicating tasks and procedures and practice needs. So what do they want? Does it fit into what the practice needs? And you work on that, you're building on that and in that regard, showing them that, remember the previous stage, the action, at the training stage, you were then teaching them, training them, right? So the main focus area now at the training stage is practice needs versus and tasks versus what they want. At the growth stage, once you have now established that relationship and this person is bringing in the A game into the optometric practice, then we, we refer to the growth stage, the main area of focus is individual needs. If you've got a, if you're a business owner and you've got a 22 year old employed in the practice, for you to expect that 22 year old is going to be working in the practice for the next 10 years or the next five years, that is completely irresponsible of you. You need to be creating an environment where you are unlocking so much potential out of that individual that their own dreams, desires, visions gets to be unlocked and you are actually creating opportunities for them and you are equipping them with what they need to move right along and get to the next level of their careers. So that when you increase the, the, the standard in your practice, even if people leave for better opportunities, the ones that come, come in at that standard because you would have created a system or a culture of what the standard of the practice is. And so don't be worried that you're equipping people and then they leave. It's actually good when you're equipping them to leave, but the ones that come, you'll always be attracting better people. That's how it's going to work. Uh, the type of relationship, this is now the next, on the first column, 
on your on your left, what you write, type of relationship. Under the support stage, it's very relational, right? But on the training stage, it's very transactional. You do this, this is what you're getting paid for. Whereas the support stage, you're building that relation. Uh, they understand who you are as an owner, you understand who they are as a staff member. Training stage, it's more about transactional. They do this, this is the result. The growth stage, however, it's more transformational. You're taking them to a level that they have never been before. So that they can take the business to a level it has never been before. Very, very important. Uh, the responsive actions by the staff. Now, remember we started with the leader. Remember in previous video trainings, we did say everything rises and falls on leadership. And so the responsive actions by staff are support stage daily routine. That's what is the daily routine? That's what's happening at the support stage. The training stage, roles and responsibilities. But at the growth stage, it's progress, promotions, uh, opportunities. That's what's being unlocked at the growth stage for staff. Opportunities at the support stage is leadership roles. Training stage, opportunities that exist there is the increase in leadership capacity, right? So the more, the longer people have been with you, you have trained them, you have seen that this person is actually growing. The opportunity that you need to be providing is more responsibility. But at the training stage, you are now increasing your leadership capacity. At the growth stage, you're establishing a leadership team where you now are allowing more autonomy because people here have shown you loyalty, they've been with you for years, they've literally helped establish the practice for it being what it is. So you establish your leadership team. The reason why we've broken it down as support stage, training stage and growth stage is very, very important. You could be sitting with a staff complement of five people. They are all at different stages. One of your staff members has been with you for two months. The others have been with you for two years and there are others who have been with you for 12 years. And so your people are at different phases of their careers uh, or their journey within your practice. And you need to understand that some require growth, some require training, whereas some require support. And so as a business owner, you need to be knowing which component are you dealing with pertaining to that particular individual. That is very, very critical. And then promotion abilities, this is now back at the column uh, on our left, the first column. Promotion abilities here, we break it down like this. At the support stage, people are established for what they can contribute. At the training stage, potential leaders are released for what they can do. At the growth stage, leaders are empowered for what they can become. That's the journey that your people need to be going through. They come in, you're showing them, hey, this is what you can actually contribute to the business. And in the training stage, hey, you are releasing them and you're equipping them to say, hey, this is what you can actually do. And at the growth stage, you are saying, hey, this is what you can actually become. That's the journey that your people come. And guess what's going to happen? There's a likelihood that they will leave post the growth stage because they will have outgrown the working environment. New people will come in. You start the whole process. The more the, the more the journey keeps going in circles, the level of excellence in the practice keeps on increasing. Because when you get in new people, they are trained on a different level because the structures, the systems, the protocols, the processes, the, the culture will have been set in a particular level as opposed to just people coming and going without any structure uh, it taking place. And then the lastly here, in back in, the, in our first column, is the investment objective. At the support stage, it's all people in the business. At the training stage, many people versus at the growth stage only one or two people it's a fewer people that you are actually working with at the growth stage so know the different stages that uh, are pertaining to the leadership impact in an optometric practice because once you understand that the different components that are existing it increases the engagement process between yourself and the team and that leads to more synergy, more connection. And when there's more synergy and more connection, that which the business has the capability of doing, it's far higher than the current scenario. And so 
that is basically module one uh, understanding the different components that are involved in an optometric practice now we're going to go on to module two and it's all about clinching the d